Kirsten Tim. A group of wealthy investors wants to bet on a horse race. So they decide to employ a group of scientists to make them get the best bet. They have a group of biologists, a group of statisticians, and a group of physicists. Two months later, the scientists reconvene and present their findings. And the biologists say, well, we could engineer a genetically engineered model, uh, ho horse. <laughs> ha, this is what happens. Um, a genetically engineered horse for you that would be unbeatable, but it would take about 100 billion pounds and take about 200 years. The statisticians say, well, we could um, predict the outcome of any race for you, and I like stereotypes, you see, um, <laughs> and it would cost about 2.35 million per race, and um, we would be right about 8.36% of the time. Finally, the physicists say, well, I mean, our way of predicting the race would be a lot more simple and a lot more cost efficient. So the investors are getting really excited and say, so what are you going to do? And the physicists say, well, first, we have to make some simplifying assumptions. So if you consider a horse to be a perfectly rolling sphere, <laughs> well, looking at science this way makes it seem a little ridiculous. And sometimes we wonder if the way we specialize into certain subjects actually gains anything. But if you now consider a different story in a different race, the race against time, and now if we're looking at a doctor, an NHS doctor at the end of his eight-hour shift, or make it 36 since it's the NHS, and he says, oh, I've lost another six cancer patients this week. I just can't find the right drug to treat them. And there's no imaging technique to predict early if a treatment is going to work. Doctor's very despaired, gives away the tumor tissue to a biologist, who analyzes it in the lab, looks at it every sorts of different ways, and comes to the conclusion that actually, tumors, not just between patients, but even the tumor in the same patient is very different if you look on the inside. And this is called tumor heterogeneity. So the biologist says, well, I'm not surprised with your simple black and white images in the clinic. You cannot possibly predict if a treatment is going to work, because look, this tumor is so different if you look within. So we need a better method that can image the different parts of the tumor and can predict if a treatment is going to work. Luckily, we have some people in this world that enjoy physics and engineering, so I've been told, and they have developed a new imaging technique called hyperpolarized magnetic resonance imaging, which can transiently increase magnetic properties of molecules by 10,000 fold. And now when the biologists were talking to the chemists, they could make some molecules for them, which we can inject into a patient, and then we can make our tumors light up and all the different spots to see the tumor heterogeneity and see where in the tumor the, the, the tumor would respond to a treatment and where it wouldn't. So next time if you talk to someone and they try telling you a story that starts our oh, physicist, a biologist, and just stop them right there and say, I know, and they're working together now to cure cancer. <laughs>